I was told, and I think we had the discussion up here, is each one of us as a commissioner needs to go out and, and walk our districts, drive our districts, and identify issues that need to be part of our maintenance. That's what I was doing. So part of what will be maintenance, which is something we do on a regular basis, will be prioritizing these other issues. So that's why it's not on that list you're looking at. Those are the highest of the priorities. Or the lowest scoring. Or the, with the lowest scoring. You know, now we as commissioners need to go back out in our districts and identify, you know, and through that we identified a lot of other issues. And also going to the neighborhood associations, they brought up different issues. And like I said, every district is different as far as what they need in their, their, their community. Um, and, and so that's being addressed. You're just not seeing it on there yet. That will come in the future. That's the worst first. Yeah. Right. Uh, Commissioner McQuay? Uh, I do have a little bit of a question um, in regard to what was, was just mentioned, that, that we as commissioners should go out and walk the roads and look at them. Uh, I had a lot of hesitation a while back when we approved a $130,000 contract to have not just Joes like us who don't know all about roads walk the streets, but to have a very fancy bunch of high tech stuff map the streets in great detail on the GIS. Does it make any sense at all for us as commissioners to go out walking our streets and report back to you? You have all that information in $130,000 worth of high tech glory, don't we? We do have all that information, yes. yes. It would just be more along the lines of if you have questions as far as why certain roads fall into certain categories. Um, and listening to your people and talking to them. <laughs> I, I think what would, I, I really would, I guess I'll make this as a formal request to staff, that um, I would like to see some translation of that contract that we did. Okay. Pick, pick some of those print them out so that somebody can look at them and say, and, and then identify where they are so somebody can go and look at that and say, all right, okay, I understand this stuff is, you know, Mr. Tim is concerned about it, but it's above the 55, so we're gonna deal with it differently, and, and that we then explain, all right, how are we gonna deal with that differently? When can we expect that something might not be done? Do we need to raise money to do it? What's the deal? It's been compiled already, hasn't it? Yeah. The information's yes. already there. Right, but it needs, I mean, it's a big database. And it's, it's totally inaccessible to a normal person. So I'm suggesting that we do something to, to make a little fold out cheat sheet. Here's how you recognize a, a 90 or a 50 or a whatever. Uh, As part of the, and Mike, I'm not sure, it's part of the next one. You need to come forward. Okay. Just the team. Just the team. Yeah. I thought he was Can you turn that on? State your name and address. State your name and address. Title. And the rating of the road that you live on. Bloodside. I'm kind of getting a little cold, so. Excuse the voice. Uh, as part of the next uh, presentation, um, we can actually select some roadways and we'll do a little PowerPoint and everything to actually show why um, certain roads are on certain categories and uh, what the actual treatment will be. I think, I think it would be helpful that we all become more informed and then as we think about how we're going to finance all this. Mm -hmm. and, and it can kind of be the same too because roads that might have a few potholes here and there that look bad might actually have a great road base. So it might look like a bad road, but in actuality, all you really need to do is do a two, two inch mill and then two inches of asphalt versus completely ripping up the entire road. And and I, road I think that maybe, and I'm thinking less of PowerPoint because you know, compared to the size of the city, it's a small number of people, but maybe something that's either on the website, print out, or a couple of crop copies. And, and maybe make some of those points because yeah we're, we're not road specialists we just look at it and say boy that looks you could lose something in that hole. Absolutely. I think I, well I think too that the presentation that you made the last time around was just the introduction to the reality of what it is that we're actually sure. facing out there. There's going to be started. a lot of conversation over this. <laughs> we're just getting started. Yeah. Exactly. Commissioner I know. Yes. The, the way that these are rated it's 
the reason it's a high tech thing, it's not that you could just go there and take a look at it. If it was that easy, then everybody would go, hey, oh, let's go take a look at it. Mm -hmm. So this is much more sophisticated and, and more involved than that. But we also know that the roads have been layered over many, many times. All your there's almost no gutters left in the city. They're all overlaid and overlaid. So there's a lot more involved with it. Plus, they're not out there when storm water was going crazy like it was this last week. And there's other issues that fall into this category as well. So I would say. Um, there's been reports, I know Mark Roos did many reports over many years. I read a number of those now going back 20 years. Mm -hmm. And so there was things in there that have been in there needing attention and just didn't get there for one reason or another. And so this is trying to look at things, as you said originally, very collectively. And it's not gonna be able to see it, because obviously we can all see cracked sidewalks and potholes, and that's very disturbing. It's bring people around to purchase houses or, or come into neighborhoods and they'll look good. But we need to make them so not only look good that they are there and we make very good investments as what we're deliberating now. With all due respect, I just wanted to comment, you know, I'm a little set back that a commissioner would address something that I'm going out and talking to the people and driving around with staff. You know, I'm doing this because staff has the ability to educate me, therefore I can educate everyone else. You know, Jamie laid out the map, showed me exactly what the study looked like, answered my questions, we drove the neighborhoods, we walked the neighborhoods, and therefore anyone coming up to me, I can answer the question. So I'm a little set back by, you know, why would you walk the neighborhoods, why would you drive the neighborhoods? I do it to educate the people so we don't, they don't have to wait and come to a meeting and, and wait two months I can actually ask, answer the question. So, you know, just a little upsetting. Uh, yeah, I, I apologize for uh, any upsetting. My, my concern at the time that we voted to spend taxpayer money at, at the level of $130,000 was, uh, it seemed to me that in the end, the decision of Whit Road gets fixed and what gets done is gonna be a human decision. You know, it's gonna be, neighbors making enough noise or staff deciding something. And I, I had a question, did we really need a very high tech survey on it and to spend that kind of money when we didn't have a lot of money? So my that was what was what bothered me is is if if we're now resorting to commissioners walking the streets to evaluate them, that seems like we then spent the money uh, poorly. I don't think we did, but um, I think what we need is this process just like you did, Commissioner Amaro. So you now understand how to rate roads from that kind of a study, and you can explain to you what's a good thing. Um, on, I would like to comment, unrelated to roads, um, to what uh, Ms. Anderson described, that uh, she got very good service from Mr. Rusky, from Joel Rusky, helping out. And I have a feeling that that is that kind of work both relating to water and electric. I think all of us as commissioners have heard any number of stories from, from residents who had a difficulty with very high bills, they don't understand why, and it takes somebody from staff being able to dig in and poke at it long enough to figure out, okay, and, and it's not always easy to figure out. It may take some serious staff time, but I think it's something that is very important, and I would ask us here as we're going into the budget that we think about uh, having a certain amount of staff available to help residents if they have unusually high usage, how can we help them use less? Because that helps us out, helps them out. It's a good thing all around. But it does take staff time and it takes somebody who's both persistent and has some technical knowledge or a little bit of a detective inclination. Um, and, uh, but I hope that we, as we look at budget, that we think about we may need to increase that a little bit. And I'm glad for the success story. Thank you. Uh, and, and, you know, talk to him, Matt. I think he, he knows some stuff about city. <laughs> He's got connections. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Vice Mayor, did you have something? No, ma'am. Okay. Anyone else? Just, Commissioner Zerny. I'm just a little bit, um, I guess, surprised when we're trying to take a very scientific approach to this, being with a scientific background, that this wouldn't be something that would be right down your path, that, that we're trying to be very businesslike about this and use the kind of information that's available to us now to be very fair 
It's not like somebody yells louder that my street has more potholes than another.